Hello, hello, hello. How are you guys doing today? Okay, so I want to talk about something rather serious today. Um, I wanted to make a video where I was flipping a fan and having a lot of fun today, but I saw something online last night, and um, it was actually sent to me by quite a few people as well, and it just really, really bothered me because something that I felt was going to happen months ago, I, I see it starting to happen, and um, having witnessed a similar situation like this before, many times actually, and, and with different scenarios, um, I, I, I see what's happening, and it's extremely dangerous, and very worrisome, and so I wanted to have a conversation with you guys today about the redefining of the history and the narrative of Colleen Ballinger and what she did. And I think this was an important conversation to have. Um, I want to kind of like, <laughs> I, I, I was like getting ready for this video and I was, I have a bunch of notes on here that I want to kind of follow because there's some important points that I want to talk about. Um, but I was thinking about this because I was reached out to by a rather reputable um, news organization to do an article and do an interview, um, and I know they reached out to several people to do interviews about what Dramageddon was like and what it was like to make videos at that time and stuff like that. And whenever I'm reached out to to do interviews, and I'm actually reached out to quite a bit, and I typically turn them down um, for various reasons. Um, but I, I asked this person, I said, what, what's your point of view? What's your perspective? Like, what are you wanting to do with this article? And they responded to me and they said, I just wanted to kind of know what it was. They were very nice. And they were like, I just wanted to kind of know what it was like at that time. We were coming up on the anniversary of it. And, um, and also how lucrative it was for you, which is always interesting to me. Whenever anybody reaches out to me and talking about covering um, Dramageddon or beauty influencers or what it was like at that time, that question is one question they always want to know is how lucrative was it for you at this time, at that time, right? Which I think is interesting um, when people ask that question and they, they want to know about, you know, the money that you made over this. And, you know, it's interesting because I don't think I've ever made a video in, in my entire seven plus years of being on YouTube, I don't think I've ever made a video where I thought, this is the one that's going to make me a lot of money. This is the one that's just gonna, it's gonna be lucrative as hell. I'm gonna make, you know, $100,000 off this video. This is gonna be the one that's gonna make me all the money in the world, you know? And so, in thinking about whether or not I was gonna do this interview with him, which I chose not to, I was like, my point of view has always been to just get the information out there to the consumer, to the watcher of YouTube, to the people that are interacting or watching or buying products <clears throat> or buying into the life of the influencer, the YouTuber, the Instagrammer, whoever they are, the TikToker, or whatever, right? Like that's always been my goal from the very beginning. And um, I know people are like, oh yeah, right, whatever. Well, if, if, if that weren't the case, I wouldn't have multiple channels that get three, four, 500 views that I continue to post on a regular basis. I, I make videos because I love to make videos, you know? And so it's interesting to me because typically videos that do really, really well are not videos that I ever think are gonna do well. And videos that I think, well, they somebody might be interested in this are typically videos that don't do well at all, you know? And then there are those videos that I know that are not gonna get a lot of views, but I think that are important to do. And like I did the other day, a video talking about my sobriety and um, encouraging anybody out there that might be sitting there struggling with, you know, addiction, that you too can, you know, get sober and we do recover. Those videos are really, really important for me to do as well. Um, in the last, I would say, year and a half to two years, I've kind of, really reevaluated my voice on YouTube and on this channel. <clears throat> and I've kind of gone through this transformation. A lot of you have witnessed it in real time. And um, there are a lot of things today that I talk about on this channel that I probably wouldn't have talked about. There's a lot of uh, influencer scandals and situations that, um, that I wouldn't have covered 
let's say five, six years ago, four or five years ago, that I would definitely cover today if it happened, because I think those conversations are important to be had. And I actually think, and I'm going to get into this later, that um, as people out there that have a platform to cover these things, if we don't, and we don't give a well thought out opinion on these things, and we're just sharing the information, then we're just really furthering the story. We're really not helping the situation at all. And, um, you know, there was, a, there was a period of my career on YouTube where I very much rode the, the middle line. Like, I just, I, I didn't give my opinion on much of anything. And before that, I had very much given my opinion. And um, I think that's what drew people to me. They liked hearing my opinion about things. Whether they agreed with it or not, they liked hearing my opinion, you know? Um, I'm not somebody that deletes comments in my comment section, so people felt like they could share their comments, whether it was, you know, agreed with me or disagreed with me, and we could have a conversation about that, right? And that's one of the things I've always loved about YouTube. Um, I think that through the years, and especially in the last two years, I've realized there are some really, really <clears throat> important things that we need to be talking about. And, you know, I think it's interesting that I have reporters to this day reaching out to me, asking me what my role was as a drama channel at the time that drama Geddon was going on and the beauty influencer drama and the fallout of these people's careers and all this kind of stuff. And they think that we played a very important piece in that, which says that whether we're getting 400 views or 400,000 views, that people out there are listening to what we have to say. And what we have to say is important. What you have to say in the comment sections of my videos or anybody else's videos is important. And I've said this for a very long time. YouTube and TikTok and Instagram wouldn't exist. No influencer out there would exist or have the power or the fame that they have if there weren't people on the other end watching it. YouTube exists because of you, because of the people that are watching it, right? And so I think that there have been times throughout the years where I always on this channel wanted to kind of keep it lighthearted and I wanted to talk about things that were funny. I wanted to entertain people. I wanted to bring people enjoyment. And so I steered away from the more hard-hitting conversations that were conversations that in all honesty, I was having behind the scenes with my friends, you know? I was having it with my best friend. I was saying, oh my God, this happened. What do you think about that? And talking to other people within the community about it, even though they were covering it and I had chosen not to. And mostly I'm talking about like the James Charles situation. And I look back on that, you know? And I think about, um, it, it, that's one of the things that people include when they want to talk about Dramageddon is they want to talk about James Charles. James Charles is somebody that I think went through probably the, the, the one of the biggest scandals on YouTube or whatever, influence, the internet, period, you know? I can remember the day that he lost like 3 million subscribers within 24 hours and gained them back within like a matter of three or four days, right? I can remember that. I can remember sitting here and I, I did cover that. But then when the allegations came out and things like that, I kind of steered away from that. I steered away from talking about those more serious topics. And people would always encourage me. They'd say, Peter, we want to hear what you have to say. You know, on your vlog, you're talking about really deep things. On your Peterisms channel, you're talking about really deep things. But on your drama channel, you're not. And that your voice is needed to be heard over there. When, when you do videos about sobriety and addiction and you talk about, you know, LGBTQIA pride and things like that, like your voice, it, it needs to be heard. And I started thinking about that. And then when the Colin Ballinger situation happened last year, June, I was like, this is important. This is a really important thing to be talking about, right? This is an important topic <clears throat> that we need to talk about. Now, as somebody that has been doing this for seven years, okay, and I have witnessed I don't really even know what to call it. I don't consider the Colleen Ballinger situation with her victims drama, but I don't know, scandals or situations or whatever you want to call them, right? Um, I mean, I've witnessed them all the way from, you know, Manny and Jeffrey putting out a pallet at the same time to Patrick Starr rolling his eyes to the situation with James and Shane and uh, Jeffrey and Tati, the situation with Tati and James. You know, I mean, I've covered it across the board, right? And with major situations of scandals, what I've noticed is that at first what happens is the person takes a break, okay? Is that they are completely absent. 
And then what they typically come out and do is they do one of two things, okay? They come out and they completely ignore the situation or they kind of like indirectly make a joke of it. This is like a pattern. You got Anybody that's in the drama community can tell you if they've covered this extensively for as long as I have, they can tell you this is a pattern of how it goes, right? Is that they either ignore it or kind of indirectly make a joke of it or they come out and they do the gray hoodie apology, <laughs> you know, uh, video and they say they're going to take some time off and they say, if you you don't want to follow me in the future. You don't have to follow me in the future. I totally understand it. Blah, blah, blah. Then they take some time off. Then they come back and they play it very quiet, right? And they try to just do the best they can and whatever. And then over time, they kind of go back into their old ways and whatever. People kind of forget the drama. New drama happens. New scandals happen. There's fall back into the, you know, back there. And then they continue to do the things that they were doing before or to some degree. And then people have kind of forgotten because they've moved on to the next big story that's occurred, right? And, um... And then they are kind of like out of that. And then they don't ever feel like a need to apologize. And then the people that have stood by their side all the time, that small group of fans that were too afraid to walk away and see the truth, they make excuses. They'll say things like, well, it's been too long now. There's no reason for them to come out and speak about it, right? And then what they do is they start rewriting the narrative of what happened, right? Which is always interesting. And I've talked to so many of my friends within the drama community about this, that when you live it in real time, okay, and you report on these things and you're seeing them happen in real time, you don't forget how they happened. I cannot tell you how many times I have watched Jeffree Star get in a TikTok or an Instagram or a YouTube video and say something and I'm like, that is literally not what happened. Like, you literally just rewrote history, okay? And are painting a picture to 16 million people of something that didn't happen. One of the reasons why I have been so pressed about talking about the idea of predator protectors, which has become almost kind of that term has become kind of a joke, right? But these people that surround the influencers that are problematic, okay? And at this point, what you have to realize is the, the people that are surrounding the problematic influencers, they are problematic as well. So it's very much, um, I'll kiss your ass if you kiss mine kind of mentality. And if down the road I get myself into some trouble, you'll be there for me too. I have witnessed that for the last seven years. I'm not new at this, okay? I've been doing this for a very long time. And so I've witnessed that. And so one of the reasons why I ride so hard for those people is because when you have, let's say, five people, okay, that have a platform of two to 10 million or more people that are following them, and you're painting a picture that nobody, that that person didn't do anything wrong, okay, or that we should give that person grace, or we should give that person forgiveness, when they've done nothing to ask for it, or deserve it, or change their behaviors, or shown any acknowledgement whatsoever, we should just give it to them because you say that we should, right? Because these people are showing up to their events, they're continuing to follow them, they're continuing to like their pictures, they're reviewing their products, they're buying their products, they're underneath their video saying, hi, so glad you're here, missed you, they're taking pictures with them, they're going out and doing social things. What they're saying is, okay, this person is okay. I would not be around this person if they were not okay. So to their audience of one, one, five, 10, 15 million followers to all those people out there, the message that they are translating is this person that we found to be problematic is no longer problematic. It is totally fine to be around them, right? And this is where when people say to me, well, I don't know why you take such an issue with this person or you take such an issue with this person because this person, um, it's not their responsibility what their friend did. It's not their responsibility what this person did. Okay. If that person that was problematic, ne if all those people said, I don't want anything to do with you anymore, I can no longer support you, I can no longer endorse you, I'm not going to show up to your launches, if nobody, okay, I mean, we want to talk about, I talked about this in my video yesterday, the term cancellation, all right, which does not exist. None of these people have been canceled. If they were canceled, they wouldn't be putting out videos that anybody was watching. They wouldn't be showing up anywhere, you know, on and on and on. They would be, there is no such thing as cancellation. I'm so fucking tired of that word. There is no truth to the word cancellation, okay? Because all of these people that have had supposed cancellations, all right, are thriving today, are still making millions of dollars a year, are still putting out merch, 
launching products, launching brand new businesses, showing up at red carpet events, on and on and on, and are getting hundreds of thousands, if not millions of views per day, okay? So no, they're not canceled, not whatsoever. And I'm not saying that they deserve to be canceled, I'm just saying they're not. So when they cry a river as if that's their excuse, they're not canceled. If they were truly canceled, what that would look like is they wouldn't have the ability to continue to make videos because nobody would watch them, okay? You want to talk about somebody that probably truly has been canceled, that's not even part of this whole community, or the, the community of beauty influencers or YouTubers and things like that, but it is a commentary channel, is Deaf Noodles. Deaf Noodles is somebody that so screwed the pooch on his career that literally cannot get it back. I mean, he was getting hundreds of thousands of views, had a thriving career, started coming for his audience, started coming for this, and I have to believe that I have never talked to him, you know, about this. I haven't, I don't know if we've ever even talked, maybe in DMs years ago or something, but I don't think I ever have talked to, to Dennis, but I have to believe for Dennis's point of view, you know, as somebody that started a second channel, he has to be saying they're going, this is baffling. Like I did some horrible shit, right? But I didn't do anything in comparison to Colin Ballinger that's still getting tons of views. I didn't do anything in comparison to James Charles that just launched multiple products from his brand new brand that has tons of people surrounding him. <clears throat> and I'm not, I'm not condoning anything that Deaf Noodles did. Deaf Noodles literally cannot repair his career. Like, he cannot repair it, okay? If there is anybody that comes close to cancellation, it's Deaf Noodles. His videos went from hundreds of thousands of views, and I think he gets like 2,000 views a video now. He's done. He's done. I mean, it would be, for him, he would have to re completely reinvent himself in a completely different way, and I don't know that he has the time or the energy to do that, or I don't know, I don't know, you know. <clears throat> I mean, I said something the other day that I think it would be good for Deaf Noodles to do, <clears throat> true crime, or do something completely different is basically what I was saying, right? Because I think people are done with him within the commentary com community. I don't think he has any credibility. I don't think his voice means anything. And that's why I say in my videos when I talk to other commentary channels that are so willingly giving away their credibility and their integrity, be very careful about that because the time will come when people will hold that against you. We've seen that happen in the last seven years with beauty influencers, with drama channels, on and on and on. We've seen it across the board, Right. But I've seen this pattern happen through the years. And one of the instrumental pieces of these problematic people regaining back their prominence, okay? And if you want to call it cancellation, being uncanceled, so to speak, is when they start having people come back to them and saying, well, this person didn't do anything wrong to begin with. And we, it really is not that big of a deal. If you knew this person behind the scenes, and then they start showing up in pictures again, because it's safe, right? It's been enough time. This person has been in timeout long enough. We need to take them out of timeout, right? Okay. They didn't learn anything while they were in timeout. They didn't come out and make any apologies. They didn't show any change of behavior, but it's been enough time, right? Who decides that? The friends of the influencers decide that. This is why it's so important because they're the ones that start to show up at the launches. They're the ones that start to show up at first in the comment sections of the videos. They're the ones that are posting their pictures on Instagram and giving them relevance again, giving them prominence, telling people that it's okay to follow them. That's why it's so important, okay? Is it their responsibility? No, it's absolutely not their responsibility what that person did. What their responsibility is, is to their audience, they are translating a message of which they are not aware of, okay? That they, you know, somebody commented on my video yesterday when I was talking about Todger Call, and he said, you know, Todger Call came out and said, I know Colleen Ballinger isn't this person. And somebody commented on my video, and they said, they're literally serial killers whose wives and children, and the BTK killer is a great example of this, and I'm not, I'm not equating Colleen Ballinger to a serial killer, but it's a good a, a example of family, right, and friends, never knew what that person was doing. And yet, Todger Call and Jojo Siwa and all these people, right? They know who Colleen Ballinger is. They, or maybe she just really hid very, very well, you know? She had a lot of people for years and years and years. You have to remember one of the reasons why Colleen Ballinger was able to get away with this for years was because she had a fan group that would defend her at any expense. The one reason why this whole thing fell apart for Colleen Ballinger last summer was because it was her fans that started to turn on her, the majority of her fans. They started to see the truth about her, right? Because when other fans started to come out and talk about her, it was relatable. They had experienced similar things. So that's why when I've talked about certain creators and people have come to me in my DMs and been like, yeah, what you said in your video that somebody said to you, that's exactly what I've experienced. And that's why I get five to 10 DMs from people saying they experience the exact same thing, right? 
So if one influencer came out and said, what Colleen Ballinger did, I don't want anything to do with her, right? You know, if Jeffree Star would say, oh, if Todd Hall is going to have Colleen Ballinger to his party, when Jeffree Star got in videos and said she's sick, and on and on and on, if he showed up at Todrick Hall's party and Colleen Ballinger was there and said, no, I'm leaving. I'm not going to be, I'm not going to be around or show up to somebody's birthday party and said that loudly and made that clear. I'm not going to show up to somebody's birthday party that fully supports a predator. And I'm not going to be it, it, taking pictures with somebody that fully supports a predator and has invited a predator to the birthday party. I'm not going to be part of that. That message alone that Jeffree Star would have sent could have, I mean, it would have, you want to talk about, uh, that would have gotten so much attention and people would have really listened to that. People would have been like, like, oh, somebody is actually taking a stand. It's not just talk, it's walk, okay? That's why it's so important when these people do this. Well, now we have all these people coming out and basically saying, well, what Colleen did wasn't really that bad. You don't really know the definitions of what it is a, to be a predator. You don't really, these words you're throwing around, groomer, predator, they're not really, that's not really who she is. You don't know. Well, you don't get to define that because you're not the victim. The victims are the ones that get to define that, okay? And I know that's a hard, you know, thing to swallow, but try, all right? Because the majority of the people that are having these conversations are grown-ass adults that are 30, 40, and upwards, Okay? So let me tell you how this all started for me last night. First of all, I've been watching this very, very closely unfold because Colleen Ballinger has been doing her rock vlogs, doing this, doing that. <clears throat> she hasn't really come out and done a whole lot that's extraordinary. She hasn't been making big moves or anything like that, right? So then we have JoJo Siwa do the podcast, okay? And that was kind of a test. And we realized that that didn't work, okay? Then Todrick Hall comes out. Now Todrick Hall, and I don't think this is Colleen Ballinger calling these people up and being like, you're going to test the waters for me, okay? I think they just do it and Colleen Ballinger realizes how it's received, okay? So what we're seeing now is we're seeing people test the waters and each time somebody does it, there are more and more people that are like, yeah, Colleen's been in timeout long enough. We need to just forget this. It hasn't even been a year yet, you guys, okay? Since the story broke. It hasn't even been a year yet. And already people are saying that we need to hand on a silver platter to Colleen Ballinger grace and forgiveness. I'm not really sure what she did to ask for that. I don't know what she did to deserve that. I don't know what actions she's demonstrated to show change, to show growth, to show apologies. All these people have said, and this is the common thread, Colleen Ballinger has apologized. And I I'm sorry, I don't see those apologies. Where are those apologies? Because if those apologies had happened, the victims would be coming out and speaking about it. The victims would say, oh my God, I got an apology from Colleen Ballinger after all this time. I can't believe it. Who do we know that's got an apology? Trisha Paytas got an apology. She's talked about that. We know Todd Hall got an apology because he said she has apologized many times to him. Those are the people. I think Rosanna Pancino said something to the effect of, I could be getting this wrong, that Colleen Ballinger apologized to her. So those big influencers are who, she doesn't care about the victims and neither do anybody else, right? So I was sent this video last night, this TikTok by Perez Hilton, who I don't respect greatly anyway. Okay, so I got this <laughs> years ago. <clears throat> Years ago, I'm just going to put this out there now before somebody throws up this picture of me, whatever. Years ago, we were in Las Vegas, okay? And Perez Hilton was, at the time, he was hosting the Chippendale show there. And so Alex and I took Alex's cousin to the show. And we got the tickets to a friend of ours that is a big wig in Las Vegas that also knows Perez Hilton. And so Perez was uh, the person that was hosting the Chippendale show, right? So we go to the show and afterwards we're leaving and this person texts me and said, Perez wants to meet you personally. And I'm like, okay. I really, to be honest with you, I did not want to meet Perez Hilton, okay? I had no desire to meet Perez Hilton. Um, my husband and I used to read him way back in the day. There were a lot of things about him. I respected the fact that he always had his finger on the pulse and of, of trends, but I didn't respect a lot of things he did. For example, outing people, all right? Something I take very, very seriously. I don't, I, 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 that was one thing that I did not respect about him. There were a lot of other stories that had to do with people's drug use and things like that that I did not respect whatsoever, okay? And and so there were a lot of issues that I had with him. I'm not somebody that's going to have a face-to-face -face meet with somebody. And we're either going to take a picture and say hi and move it on, or I'm not going to do it at all. I wasn't at that point in my life, a point where I stand, I was standing that strongly behind my convictions.
conditions. Today, I would not meet with a man, okay? I don't respect him. I wouldn't meet with him. And I can remember... Before going to this thing, my friend said, Perez Hilton really wants to meet you. I guess because I was on YouTube or whatever at the time. And I remember reaching out to Dustin Daly and I said to Dustin, I said, do you think that I should meet with him and take this picture? Because I always think through these things, okay? I'm not somebody that just throws out predator protectors in my videos. I think through these things. And Dustin said, I'm telling you right now, don't take that picture. Don't meet with him. Down the road, you're going to regret this. Today, I regret meeting with Perez Hilton, okay? And so we're like literally outside. I'm getting this text. I'm like, Alex is like, let's just go. Why do we care, right? I'm like, I don't, you know, I feel bad because blah, 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 whatever. So he comes like running out and he's like, come on, I wanted to meet you, whatever. And so we say hi to them, him, we take a picture and that was it, right? Okay, so I'm kind of off the radar. Now I've noticed that Perez Hilton through the years, whenever anything kind of uh, trendy scandal comes up, he's always got something to say about it, all right? So I'm kind of like, you know, Perez Hilton's over here. He's raising his kids. He's come out and he's addressed the outing people and said, you know, explained his stance on that, apologized for it. I'm like, okay. You know, he's somebody that believes in growth and change. I'm like, okay, walk the walk, talk the talk. So I get sent this thing last night by several people and I also saw it online. It's this TikTok of Perez Hilton talking about JoJo Siwa going or uh, having, inviting Colleen Ballinger to her premiere of her song, okay? And he's defending JoJo Siwa in there. And he's like, I'm happy that JoJo Siwa is friends with Colleen Ballinger. And he's talking about how Colleen Ballinger or uh, JoJo Siwa is giving Colleen Ballinger grace is what he says, okay? And he goes on there and says he's happy that JoJo Siwa was friends with Colleen Ballinger because she gave her grace. And I'm sitting there and I'm watching this and I'm like, no, JoJo Siwa didn't give Colleen Ballinger grace. JoJo Siwa, Tadra Call, all these other people, and now you are giving Colleen Ballinger an excuse, okay? Because when you watch the TikTok, the TikTok very much reads as, poor Colleen, thank God somebody is giving her grace, and that happens to be JoJo Siwa, okay? I'm watching this, and I'm like, uh, Perez, where the fuck are the victims in all this? You don't care about the victims? You have kids, Perez, okay? You have kids that you care about. So if your kids, who are similar in age at this point, to your oldest ones are, to the ages of some of the people that were talking to Colleen Ballinger, and I went back yesterday as I'm looking into this, and I'm reading the text messages and the, ch the weenies chats, okay? Uh, we're calling Ballinger's asking about people's favorite sexual positions. When their first period was, she goes on extensively in these group, these group chats, okay? About her problematic marriage, all right? And he this and he that. I mean, it is so, I mean, you're talking about, there are 10 and 12 year olds in this group chat, you guys, okay? 10 and 12 year olds. She's having full on adult inappropriate conversations, and here is a grown man that is my age, okay, saying that it is great that JoJo Siwa is giving Coin Ballinger grace. I'm very confused about this, all right? I'm very, very confused about this. It's, stop. Okay, we all just need to fucking stop. We all need to stop. This is not a popularity contest, okay? This is not an opinion. We are not handing out grace dictated by who got a fucking Netflix show or how many views you had on YouTube or how long your career was or how many tours you went on or how many characters you came up with or how many fucking books you wrote. This is not a popularity contest. Stop. Okay? There is factual evidence of a grown woman having sexually explicit, inappropriate conversations, using developing relationships with minors, using them to benefit herself. Okay? Okay? That is documented. There is documented evidence about this. So stop. To anybody out there that wants to go, well, I love Colleen, but I don't care that you love Colleen. Love Colleen to the moon and back, all right? This is not about a fucking opinion. This is not about, oh, well, I love Colleen and I don't think she do this. This isn't about, well, she deserves this. It isn't about what she deserves. It isn't about, if Colleen Ballinger got what does she deserved, I can tell you right now, she wouldn't be fucking on YouTube right now making videos and people still watch them and singing her praises. I'm telling you that right now, okay? If Colleen Ballinger got what she deserved, she'd have made that apology and given those people, you don't talk about Grace Perez Hilton, Okay? You want to talk about how Colleen Ballinger deserves grace? You know who deserves grace? The fucking victims deserve grace. From Colleen Ballinger. And yet, here you are in a TikTok talking about how um, 
Jojo Siwa, how great it is that she's giving Colleen Ballinger grace. What has Colleen Ballinger, are you another one of those people that believes that Colleen Ballinger has, I mean, and you sit in your TikTok and you say, I don't condone what she's done. What is it that she did exactly? She had inappropriate conversations with minors that had sexual tones to them. And many of those minors she used and gained, okay, let's just talk alone about Becky and the situation with um, the live show, okay? And Becky's traumatized experience of that on stage. Colleen Ballinger, she gained off of that, right? She got laughter. She got applause. That was not the Becky show. That was the Miranda Singh show, okay? That was the Colleen Ballinger show. She gained off. The camera stopped. So when we talk about these words that people are so uncomfortable with, predator and grooming and all this kind of stuff. But then we want to throw the word grace out there, you know? I'm like, we are not even a year away from this and people are so willing to grant this woman grace when she literally has shown no change whatsoever. She got called out and stayed in the group chats for months. Didn't think there was anything wrong about that. So probably her legal was like, uh, Colleen, you need to be out of those group chats, okay? On and on and on. Not to mention, four years ago, which I'm going to bring up here in a second, four years ago when Adam McIntyre originally came out with these allegations, she had a lot of people behind her back then, okay? And then she regained her popularity. She made an apology to a minor for having inappropriate conversations with him four years ago, and her plan worked. And she got popularity again to the point where she was putting out books, and she was on tour, okay? That's how much her popularity grew, in four years, because nobody believed the victim, Adam McIntyre, all right? Four years ago, Adam McIntyre came out with this. Four years ago, he talked about this. His story didn't change, but we're going to get to that in just a second. So I'm looking at all this kind of stuff, right? And Perez Hilton's going on here, and he's talking about he believes that people can change and grow. I do, too. I really do, you know? And... If I didn't believe that, I would have given up on humanity a long, long, long time ago. There's a lot of people that I would have given up on if I didn't believe that change could occur in people, right? Um, but I also think that the differences between Perez Hilton and Colleen Ballinger is like, okay, with the whole outing situation, Perez Hilton has addressed that. Addr Perez Hilton in many old interviews has addressed why he felt that was okay at the time, how he feels about that now, now he feels bad about that, certain stories he's covered, he's addressed that, okay? I understand, Perez Hilton, your point of view today and how you've changed and grown and you've learned over time. The problem is Colleen Ballinger hasn't witnessed that, okay? Or we haven't witnessed that from Colleen Ballinger. She hasn't shown any change. She hasn't shown any growth. I'm all about granting people grace, but I don't know that we just hand it over to them on a silver platter. You know, we're talking about victims that have received death threats, have a hard time going out in public. They're, they're struggling, moving on with their lives because of what they went through and shared their stories. And many of them had, didn't have anything to gain. Many of them just shared their stories in interviews that they weren't paid for and on Twitter and other places. They didn't have anything to gain from that sharing their story that they are forever going to be known as these people that went through these situations with Colleen Ballinger. I mean, what did they have to gain from that? And yet people think that Colleen Ballinger should be forgiven. The, the sentiment from people like Todra Hall and JoJo Siwa and, Colleen, and, uh, and now Press Hilton and all these other people that are going to start coming out of the woodwork is let's rewrite the narrative, okay? It really wasn't that bad what Colleen Ballinger's done. She sat in time out long enough. Don't you believe that she deserves forgiveness and grace? Well, one thing about the world is that the majority of us have at one point or another, the majority of us, when I say this, I know there's going to be that one person that says, well, I have it. The majority of us have done something in our lives that we wish that we could find some grace or forgiveness through, okay? At least one thing in our lives. So when you say to your audience of millions of people, this person deserves forgiveness or grace, we all want forgiveness or grace. That's a relatable comment, okay? So I wanted to go in last night and I wanted to actually look and see what is grace, okay? And, and how do we define that in society? And I actually found this article and it was about kind of like a religious description of what grace is. And it was written by Christine Hoover, H-O-O-V-E-R. You can find it online. It says, what does it mean to give grace to one another? Now, many, much of this is about religious connotation. So I'm going to read to you the parts that I think are so profound of what she says about grace. 
And she says, I've heard that phrase a thousand times, but for some reason, this particular st time stuck with me for several days. And she goes on to say that her friend was referring to something itty bitty, something that hadn't required much from me other than a small favor. Had I really given her grace? Maybe, but maybe not. After all, what does it mean to give grace to one another? Grace is often a word we throw around, but struggle to define. We celebrate and extol it, but I also think we misunderstand it, especially when it comes to giving grace to others. I think what we mean, I, this is what I think we mean when we say we should give grace, that we give free passes. Then she goes on to say, and those free passes usually equate to, uh, relate to things that aren't even spiritual matters. We equate letting someone see our messy house as them giving us grace. But when giving grace is actually applied to spiritual matters, we tend to lean toward believing we should never press, never hold a line of truth, or call someone away from the cliff of self-destruction. Okay? She goes on later to say, How often are we cheating our friends of spiritual growth because we are giving a free pass instead of grace? How often, I dare ask, are we cheating ourselves when we want the free pass from friends rather than the truth and the grace that asks us to change? Dear friends, let us truly give and receive grace. And, you know, as someone that does speak the language of, you know, recovery and has lived it, I am surrounded by friends that don't give me free passes. Fact check this if you want. I've said it in hundreds of videos. I have friends in my life that tell me what I need to hear, not what I want to hear. And what I witnessed from all of these people is that they are giving Colleen Ballinger, several of the fans that stick behind her, that sing her praises in her comment section, celebrities that are now coming out, people that are doing things with her. I see them giving Colleen Ballinger free passes, okay? Grace is when somebody has moved through, has shown change, has asked for forgiveness. I'm sorry, has Colleen Ballinger ever asked any of the victims for forgiveness? Has she ever come out and asked her fans for forgiveness? Has she ever come out to her fans or to her audience or to the victims and apologized? Sincerely, not with a fucking musical instrument, okay? Has she ever come out and apologized to them directly and stated what she was apologizing for? Has she ever come out and said, not just, I'm sorry, Okay, but has she ever just come out and said, I'm sorry for these things. These were wrong. I should never have done these things. I'm sorry how they affect you now and how they will affect you down the road and what you will carry with it because the things we carry are heavy. Has she ever done that? Are we giving her a free pass or are we granting her grace? And if we are granting her grace, why are we? Based on what? Because she's a human being and all human beings deserve grace? Well, I don't know about that, okay? I've had to work really, really hard in my life to receive grace from some people, okay? And for things that are so much less, so much less than this. So cry me a river that Colleen Ballinger isn't getting a lot of grace for this. And yet again, when we want to rewrite history and talk about, well, Colleen wasn't really that bad. And so it's so great that she has this friend that's standing by her that's giving her grace, right? Yeah, Colleen Ballinger helped build the career of JoJo Siwa. Let's not ever forget that, okay? Colleen Ballinger had JoJo Siwa in multiple videos, many of which she was inappropriate with her as a minor, okay? So let's not forget about that, you know? So I went on and I thought to myself, how do we uh, offer change and growth to someone who doesn't even want it for themselves? I have not witnessed from Colleen Ballinger since she has come back in that high video that she's wanted to change and grow. So how am I so supposed to offer her grace on her change and growth when she hasn't demonstrated change and growth to begin with? Listen, I am somebody that wants to change and grow every fucking single day. I struggle with it. It's hard, right? I share my struggles online. You know, I don't understand why we just, on a silver platter, hang out, hand over free passes and grace to Colleen Ballinger that has done absolutely nothing and hasn't even asked for it. I haven't heard her ask for it in the video. Somebody please point me in the direction of the video where Colleen Ballinger says, I feel so fucking horrible for the, the shit that I did. And I am so sorry and listed the, the victims. And I don't give a shit if, she, if she's worried about legal with that. I don't give a shit, okay? I'm talking about the right thing to do. Tell me where she's done that. On a huge, I mean, this, we're not talking about multiple different things. We're talking about a huge story that occurred, okay? That she's aware of, that everybody in her life is aware of. That's going to affect her life forever. Please point me in the direction of that video 
when you want to talk about multiple apologies, Todra Call, or that we should hand her grace, Perez Hilton, please show me and direct me to that video where she has asked for forgiveness. That she has apologized to those victims. Because I can tell you right now, having talked to Adam McIntyre, Adam McIntyre does not want to burn at the stake. I can tell you right now, if she apologized to him genuinely and apologized to his family genuinely and asked for forgiveness, I, in my, I honest to God, in my heart of hearts, believe that Adam McIntyre would grant her forgiveness. And that's a powerful fucking thing because forgiveness is for ourselves, not for the other person. I think the victims want to move on. I think they want to continue to go, right? But their fear is also if the story dies, then what was the point of it ever being spoken about to begin with? Why ever talk about it to begin with if she's just going to be in two years back to where she was again, on tour, writing books, getting offered shows? And where am I? Forever the person that was the victim of Colleen Ballinger that lied and I'm still getting death threats from people that hate me because they're super fans of Colleen Ballinger? What was it all for then? That's why we have to keep the story alive, right? So, you know... I'm so tired of this rewriting of the Colleen Ballinger history that is literally not even a year old yet, right? And people say she didn't do anything wrong. She's not a predator. She's not a groomer. Just stop. Stop. Okay? This, like I said, this is not an opinion. It's the fucking truth. I went out and Googled yesterday, and I'd already seen it a million times in Adam's videos and online and everything else, the weenies chats where you can see that Colleen Ballinger's talking. Colleen Ballinger has never come out and said, if it were me... And I was calling Ballinger, and there was no truth to this whatsoever. The fucking first video I would make is saying, there is no truth to this. I didn't write those things in those group chats. I never talked to Adam McIntyre. I never asked him those questions. I never had those conversations with her, or with him. She has never come out and said that. Period. End of story. Okay? There is factual evidence. This is not fucking opinion-based. This is not, I like her, I don't like her. This is factual evidence. Stop with the opinions. Oh, I like Colleen. I don't give a fuck that you like Colleen. Like Colleen till the moon and back, like I said, okay? Then just come out and say, I like Colleen. I don't care that she talks to little kids in dirty ways, okay? But I'm gonna keep on liking her. It don't matter that I have kids and I have brothers and sisters and I have all this kind of stuff. I'm gonna stand behind somebody with these allegations. Keep on saying it all you want. But that's the truth. Let's not hide behind the lie and make it something we, it isn't. And every scandal I have ever occurred, or has ever occurred that I have ever covered on YouTube, there's always been a rewriting of history. And then people start to believe the rewriting of history. And we are at the beginning of that with Colleen Ballinger, and we're not even a year out. That is extremely dangerous. I go back and watch Toddy Westbrook's video the other day, and I'm like, she's saying things in videos now that she is, like, rewriting history of what she said in that video. The Breaking the Silence video. I'm like, and now people are, like, nodding their heads. They're like, oh, yeah. Well, I'm like, no, Toddy, you lied. You lied. Anybody can go back and watch that video. It's been re-uploaded. This is why drama channels have, have existed, okay? Not to make a shit ton of money like people want to know, but to expose the truth. For the people out there that are consumers, that are buying these people's products, that are watching these people's videos. I don't know what to tell you if you don't want to know the truth, you know? At least be honest with yourself and say, yeah, I love this person. I fan over this person. I don't give a shit how they treat other people. I don't give a shit if they have a hundred victims. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go hard for this person. I would respect somebody more for that. I'd be like, well, that's your truth. At least that's honest. At least you're fucking honest. But don't get in a fucking TikTok and tell somebody that to hundreds of thousands of people that she deserves grace when she's never done anything to deserve it. Okay? Don't be getting in a podcast, JoJo Seawall, and saying, when you take a lie and run with it. What lie, girl? What lie? Factual evidence is what we're talking about. You know? I have spent a lot of time covering this where I have gone to organizations that their sole mission is focusing on victims of perpetrators, okay? I have used these definitions from these organizations which appropriately define the behaviors of Colleen Ballinger and show a pattern of behavior over time, okay? But nobody really wants to hear that that is a fan of Colleen Ballinger. They make excuses. And the excuse is, you go into these definitions or people go into these definitions, she's not... Uh, a groomer, she's, you know, she's not a predator, those words are really harsh, blah, 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 but here's the reality, okay? Here's the reality. 
I don't care how old you are. If you had a brother or a sister, or if you're a parent or a grandparent, or you had a neighbor, or you had somebody, a friend, a child of a friend of yours, or anybody, okay? that an adult was talking to in the manner that Colleen Ballinger was talking to, okay, these children. If you knew a 12-year-old who a 36-year-old woman was telling them, go in there and read in the Weenies chat groups the conversations and what she was saying to them about her marriage with Josh, okay? If any 36-year-old woman was talking to your 12-year-old that way, you would pull them away so quickly your head would spin, Okay? You would tell everybody in your neighborhood about it. That teacher would be fired. That principal would be fired. Okay? Let alone talking about what's your favorite sexual position. You know, hey, bitches, I'm here. You know, on and on and on. Asking people about their first periods. You know, body checking people with eating disorders. You know, everybody wants to talk about Eugenia Cooney and what a bad role model she is. And we minimize Colleen Ballinger being in group chats with minors body checking, okay? And asking people to send her pictures and things like that. Look, throw out the word predator and groomer. The reason why those words are important is because they give validation to the victim stories. But throw them out for a second. Call it creepy. Call it weird. Call it the weird fucking ant. I don't care. If it was you, you would not be okay no matter what fucking words you use. You would not care about the definition of the words. You wouldn't care what words you were using. I can tell you the majority of you right now would be calling up a school board, calling up your neighborhood HOA, calling up the police, or calling up somebody and dealing with it. Instead of writing comments underneath Colleen Ballinger's videos, I'm so happy that you're back. That is so fucking weird to me that anybody is okay. Anybody is okay, right? But we should give her grace, shouldn't we? Okay. <clears throat> and I'm sure I'll get a TikTok out of this from Perez Hilton because this will give him some relevance. Perez Hilton, bring it on, okay, baby? Because you know what? I can make 10 videos to your one TikTok. So bring it on, all right? Um, you know, and then I went in here and I'm reading his messages between Colleen and Adam McIntyre. Be between Colleen and her weenies group, right? She talks about favorite sexual positions, first periods, and more. She goes into extreme detail about her problematic marriage with children. With children. All right? If any of one of these kids, you know, I have had so many friends of mine that um, had kids or were friends of mine, you know, when they were younger that got pregnant when they were like 15, 16, 17 years old. And the scrutiny that they went through or their children went through for getting pregnant as teenagers, I mean, they were like so... The stigmatization of teenage pregnancy was so horrible about it, you know? And they got so made fun of for this and made fun of for that. And yet you have a grown woman asking people this age... And younger, 12 to 14 years old, what their favorite sexual position is and when their first period is and talking about extensively about her family marriage. And people are, they can defend that. This, like I said, stop. This is not an opinion. This is factual evidence. Go Google search it like I did. Somebody in my video the other day said, I've done extensive research and I can't find anything. And somebody underneath it commented and said, are you kidding? I literally, in 30 seconds of Googling it, came up with every group chat and everything in the image search and in all across the internet. In every article, they're listed. I don't know what kind of research you're doing, but you are a Colleen Ballinger super fan, through and through, okay? So if you want to find the evidence, it's out there. The people that don't want to find it are the people that are truly staying ignorant to this. You know, and I'm looking at this and I'm thinking... Like I said before, this is an adult woman with children having these inappropriate conversations, and I don't care. This is not about overstepping boundaries with fans, okay? This is not about her going up to a 30-year-old woman and giving them a hug, all right? Which in today's society, you ask somebody, can I hug you, all right? Because we don't know what people's boundaries are. This is somebody coming into children's. It's not about crossing boundaries. It's not about not knowing boundaries, Girl, you know not to be having conversations like that, okay? And if you don't know at 30 to 36 years old that you shouldn't be asking a 14-year-old what their favorite sexual position is to even assume that somebody at that age is having sex, okay? Or to even ask something so personal as to when, how, when their first period was. Girl, what is wrong with you? What is so fucking wrong with you that you think that is crossing boundaries, that alone implies what serious help you need and that you should not be spreading any more of your mess to anybody else, right? I mean, it's so bizarre. 
You know, and then I'm sitting here and I'm thinking about how extremely problematic this is. And I'm thinking about Adam McIntyre, right? And Adam McIntyre is really important in the story. Not just because last year when Cody Rance exposed her side of the story that it brought up all of Adam McIntyre stuff. And that's something that people don't remember, right? It wasn't Adam coming out with the story. It was Cody Rance and Adam replying to it because he had to. Because it involved him, right? But one of the reasons why Adam McIntyre is really important to the story, and Adam McIntyre, who had to move because of death threats, Adam McIntyre's mother, who I absolutely adore, Sinead, I think she's probably one of the most fucking amazing mothers I've ever witnessed in this entire world, and she is a mama bear, and she has stood by her kid through and through, and she is an amazing mother to her other children, and my mother would have been just like Sinead, and, and I love her for that. And Sinead, I, I, you know I have mad respect for you, okay? And all, you know, all the other victims and their death threats and, and what they get online and these horrible things, re-traumatized, re-victimized over and over and over again, they have heard harsher shit than they ever heard from Colleen Ballinger, from the Colleen Ballinger fans. That's the truth, okay? Since they've come out and shared their story. But one of the reasons why Adam McIntyre is so important to this is that in a world where we live, where... People say believe the victim. Adam McIntyre came out in 2000 or came out 40 years ago and he spoke about this. And I think I said 2010 earlier. I didn't mean that. He came out 40 years ago and spoke about this, okay? Nobody believed him. Colleen Ballinger was working behind the scenes overtime with her fan group, trying to see what Adam was saying, trying to turn people against Adam McIntyre. She came out with an apology video. She edited the scene, okay, of the lingerie with Corey DeSoto. She edited that, right? She edited that. She came out with a piss poor apology. She victimized herself, which is what she's so good at. And she turned the crowds against Adam McIntyre. Now, a lot of people have asked me why I, ha I never covered this at the time. That was at a period of my life where I did not want to cover really heavy shit that was going on online, right? But in all honesty, I didn't know enough about it at that time, okay? Adam McIntyre had just started making a lot of, making more videos. I didn't really know him at the time. I heard about the story. I didn't really know about it. But now that I do, and in retrospect, I wish I had made more videos and had more to say about James Charles at the time that he was offending his victims and came out with his Holding Myself Accountable video. I wish I would have reported on it at that time. When Adam McIntyre came out four years ago and talked about Colleen Ballinger, I wish I would have talked about it at that time. And Adam knows I feel this way, but I'm going to issue a public apology to you, Adam. I am sorry that I was negligent and not talking about it. We should have kept that story alive. We should have kept your story alive, okay? Because your story has never changed in the four years since she started talking about it. Colleen Ballinger's story has changed. She's edited videos. She's had other people come out and say this and say that, and the stories aren't consistent. She's made up ukulele videos. She's done this. She's done that. But one thing she hasn't done is keep her story straight. Her stories have never been consistent, but Adam McIntyre's story has always been consistent. We should have been more diligent doing our job four years ago in listening to Adam McIntyre, the victim of Colleen Ballinger. We should have been more diligent. I should have been more diligent. And for that, I greatly apologize. We should have been talking about it more then. We should have been keeping the story alive. Because had we, maybe some people wouldn't be hurt that were hurt in those four years. Maybe some people wouldn't feel the way that they did in those four years if we would have listened to Adam McIntyre. But if we don't listen to Adam McIntyre now and we don't listen to the other victims, when Colleen Ballinger has shown in those four years that she continued to do the same things that she was doing before that Adam was talking about, if we do not stop this now and talk about it, Colleen Ballinger four years from now will have hurt and offended more people. Okay? This is why I talk about James Charles. James Charles is continuing to dip into people's DMs even though he said he was never going to do that before. Right? And we're going to hear more and more stories of more and more people getting hurt because we don't want to believe the stories of the victims because it's more important to have this be a popularity contest. That, that single thing right there is why Adam McIntyre's story is so important because if I had done my job four years ago, okay, and if all of us out there that should have been talking about these and should have been making videos about this were diligent to not let this story die and dug into it a little bit deeper. And if all these magazines had reached out to Adam four years ago and asked him for interviews and kept his story alive, some of those people might not have been hurt by Colleen Ballinger. But if we don't listen to the victims now, people will be hurt in the future. That's why Adam McIntyre's story is so important, okay? I can't tell you how many true crime stories I watch, which I watch a hell of a lot, all right? 
where somebody does something and then they're let off and then they do all this other stuff and they hurt all these other people. And the end story is always, if they had got caught and locked up or done this to them then, or people believe their story then, then they would never have hurt these other five or six people. That's why it's important to listen to Adam McIntyre's story. That's why we cannot allow the rewriting of the history of Colleen Ballinger. That's why we can't allow these people to come out and protect her and say that we deserve to give her grace. But she's never done or asked for it. She's never done anything to, to prove that she deserves grace and she's never done anything to ask for it, you know? It is so dangerous to get in videos, TikToks, podcasts, Instagram stories and claim that she has changed when she has not. She has not witnessed change. She has not shown change. She has not asked for forgiveness. She has not apologized. She has not done anything that warrants a grace, a whatever, at whatsoever. I don't understand how people can say that. It is dangerous when people with huge platforms push stories to change a narrative that the allegations are based on lies. That is so dangerous. And you are re-traumatizing and re-victimizing the victims, okay? Or to say that she made apologies or change when there's literally no evidence whatsoever to those claims. Those are the lies, Jojo Siwa, that you take and run with. That you have allowed other people, okay? And, you know, all these people are saying, well, JoJo Siwa years from now will come out and she will say that she was traumatized by Colleen Ballinger. We have no evidence of that, okay? JoJo Siwa is almost going to be 21 years old, all right? We make all these excuses for young people. JoJo Siwa has a huge platform of millions and millions and millions of people, the majority of which are children, all right? And she is platform platforming somebody that has a pattern of predatorial behavior. Don't tell me that Jojo Siwa doesn't have adults around her, okay, that should tell her that that is not appropriate. Or that we shouldn't be calling people out about that, all right? We have servicemen and women at 18 years old that are giving their lives for our country, okay? But we want to make excuses for somebody that's a 21-year-old multi-millionaire releasing music, okay? Defending a predator. Like, please make that make sense to me. We have children dying in children's hospitals, fighting for their life, having to deal with very adult situations. But we make excuses for a 21-year-old woman, okay, defending a predator. I'm sorry, that's not a good enough excuse for me. It's just not. And if she wants to be bad and grown up, then it's fucking time to grow up and face the facts, okay? And then what you have, if you guys want to accept her, those JoJo Siwa fans, as a bad girl adult, then you have an adult defending a predator, okay? And that's even worse. So, you know, for me, the excuses just are not good enough. This has never been about opinions. It is not about opinions. It's about facts. The facts are out there. They've been proven in multiple videos. If you are somebody that likes Colleen Ballinger and is going to defend her, whether you're an influencer, a makeup influencer, somebody that's collabed with her, a fan of hers, somebody that went to a show with her, somebody that bought her book, whatever, okay? A fan of JoJo Siwa's, a fan of Todd Calls, whoever you are out there that defends Colleen Ballinger, just come out and say that you love somebody that does horrible shit to kids. Just be fucking honest about it, okay? At least we can hear it from your own mouth, what you really believe. Don't sit there and rewrite history and talk about, well, she's apologized and she deserves grace and she feels bad. We've never heard those things from her. Just come out and say, I love this person that's done horrible shit to kids and I always will. That's what you need to come out and say. Just tell your truth, okay? Tell your truth and stand by it. Or your word means nothing to me, okay? And probably not to a lot of other people either, you know? If you stand so strong in your faith of Colleen Ballinger, quit trying to manipulate the facts and just tell us how you really feel. If you really believe that Colleen Ballinger is such a fantastic person and didn't do these things, then you would address each allegation directly as somebody that supports Colleen Ballinger, okay? You wouldn't come out and manipulate the facts. You wouldn't come out and... And, and, and just be so hard and ruthless to Adam McIntyre and the other victims, okay? That wouldn't be your game plan. Your game plan would be to combat facts with facts. But nobody's done that. And now we're at the point in the stage of the game where we want to rewrite the narrative of what really went down. And that's why it's important that it's never going to be forgotten. 
I will never forget. And I will continue to talk about it. And I hope others do as well. I love you guys. And I'll see you tomorrow. Bye.